So recall that egalitarianism says that public and private evidence should get equal weight, because both are equally important. So on the one hand, public evidence provides common ground and dilutes our biased private evidence. And on the other hand, private evidence is important because it's a unique vehicle for information that comes from any biases that might be roughly reliable, as long as we're careful not to weight it too heavily. So let's see how egalitarianism does with the agreement part of resolution. First, it does better than privatism. This privatism, as we saw, gave biases full sway, leading to entrenchment on both sides. Egalitarianism says that we have to temper our private evidence with our public evidence. So two disagreeing parties will probably wind up closer to each other in their beliefs um, given egalitarianism than given privatism. But egalitarianism isn't quite as good as publicism. Because as we saw on agreement, publicism gives private evidence an even smaller role, and this will tend to push people's beliefs or levels of confidence even closer. So publicism still wins on agreement, but egalitarianism is in second place. Let's see how egalitarianism does with the truth aspect. First, it's better than privatism. Consider first the person who starts off with a false belief. Egalitarianism makes her dilute her private evidence with more neutral public evidence, and this will tend to push her away from a false belief, even if she might still hold it weakly. Privatism, on the other hand, we saw, lets her remain very confident in her false belief. So it's better for the person believing falsely. Um, but what about the person who starts off with a true belief? Egalitarianism is better for him too, better than privatism anyway. Granted, it pushes him away from a true belief because it makes him dilute his reliable private evidence, but his private evidence still gets half the weight, so he might well end up uh, keeping his belief just somewhat less confidently. And this is going to be good for many of his other beliefs too, because they're less likely to be false positives. He'll have to hold them on a combination of public and private evidence. Now how does egalitarianism compare with publicism on truth? First. Egalitarianism is better for the person who has a true belief because of his roughly reliable biases. For as we saw, this person's private evidence gets to play a larger role than on publicism, so if he starts off with a confident true belief, egalitarianism is fairly likely to let him keep at least a somewhat less confident true belief. Publicism, on the other hand, tends to push him much closer to agnosticism. But Egalitarianism is worse than publicism for the person who starts off with a false belief due to unreliable biases, for the same reason. Publicism pushes him towards agnosticism, which is better than false belief, but egalitarianism is more likely to let him keep a false, a, a false belief, even if it's not a super confident one. So in short, whereas publicism totally levels the playing field between the disagreeing parties, egalitarianism still has an advantage for the true believing person. That said, it's less of an advantage than with privatism, because these beliefs will tend to be less confident. In summary, egalitarianism is in every way better than privatism, on agreement and truth. But in comparison with publicism, on agreement egalitarianism is somewhat inferior, whereas on truth, it's better for the true believer, but worse for the false believer, so the competition seems to be between egalitarianism and publicism. This isn't a clear-cut result. What should we do? Well, I think we should pick egalitarianism. It's moderately more polarizing than publicism, but at least it leaves room for some evidence-proportioned true belief about religion. And this is really important, because if nobody has a true belief, then we're stuck dialogue won't yield any progress at all towards the truth. So egalitarianism is the only view which gives us enough disagreement to make dialogue worthwhile, but not so much that we, that we won't want to engage with people who disagree with us. But there's still more which egalitarianism could do to take full advantage of the disagreement itself. I'll finish by suggesting an improvement that will put it in a better place to promote agreement as well as truth for both parties to a religious disagreement.